So far in this January transfer window, I've spent £36 million, despite there being no obvious weaknesses in the squad. Don't worry, they are all Moneyball signings, and I'm done. Probably. I mean, I do still have £56 million I could spend. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to Club 4, Part 5 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and I have been busy this January. Five players in and two and a half out. I say half because Charlie Patino has joined Vitesse on loan with an optional future fee of £7 million but we're receiving a huge chunk of money for him as well. So I think that's a likely epic profit coming on Patino, who I signed for free in the summer. The other outgoings are Dave Baskerville, one of our youngsters with not a huge amount of potential, who QPR were happy to pick up and I was happy to oblige. And Caprila has moved on to West Ham United. So obviously that all freed up a few spots in the squad. Fernandez and Lado you already know about. I've shown you those in previous episodes. Adrian Ortega though. Oh, I'm very excited about him. He's lacking a bit in work rate, but he's only 19 years old. He's another one of those players I've stretched the boundaries of the money ball rules for ever so slightly because I'm confident in the way that he's developed so far. He started off in Argentina, and if you look at how he's performed in non-competitive fixtures and cup competitions over that time, I'm pretty confident he's going to be an absolutely fantastic signing. He moved to Man U for £5.5 million in the summer. We've signed him for seven, and he's already the best left winger at the club, even better than Ramazzani, who's been playing out of his skin this season. And we have that new left back that I was so desperate for, that one potential weakness in the squad, Leo Wetzels, another player we've stretched for a little bit, another 19-year-old with room to develop. So by strict money ball rules, I'm straying a little bit from that 20 to 25 age bracket but again he's another player who has played a good chunk of first team football at a very young age one full season with Bruges a decent enough performance in this half season before we've picked him up for 11 and a half million pounds yes that's a lot for a 19 year old but he has huge room to improve and again ticks all of those club DNA boxes and our final signing to replace Ilya Caprila as our backup goalkeeper, old favourite, Joaquin Blasquez from Birmingham City. Yes, that Blasquez who made the greatest goalkeeping debut performance of all time. Goes back to Nemeth, we're just taking our time now and looking to retain the ball a bit, which I think is an excellent idea. We oh my word, no! Oh my word, I've swapped one dreadful goalkeeper for another! It, it'll be fine. He's, he's settled in now. He's performing better this season than he did last. Thank goodness. And he was only 1.2 million, so essentially we paid out the same fee that we got for Caprila. And he is another who can continue to grow. So with all those signings, we have improved a team that was already performing incredibly well. Since you were last with me, we did lose a game in the league, our first home defeat to Norwich City, a very unexpected defeat on Boxing Day. And we were knocked out by Bristol City in the third round of the FA Cup, which, to be honest, I'm actually not that bothered about. I'm glad that we've now got midweeks clear for much of the rest of the season. But apart from that, dominant wins over Cardiff, Ipswich, Blackburn, Watford, it's gone very, very well. So we can now concentrate on the league. We're 10 points clear after 28 matches played, so we don't need to do any business. But maybe I'll just have a little think about what I could spend this £58 million on. Next up in the league, we have sixth place, Sheffield United. The board and fans are both expecting a win. I'm not surprised. Our home performances this season have been utterly dominant. And the fans are hoping to see Kylian Lodo and Joaquin Blasquez make their debuts. One player who won't be making his debut today, though, sadly, is Adrian Ortega, because he's ineligible. Um... I didn't notice when I signed him from Man United that he'd already played in Argentina and for Man U this season. So he can't actually play for the first team until next season. £34,000 a week feels a little more excessive 
for a reserve team player. So we will stick him in the under 21 squad for now. Make sure he gets as much game time as he possibly can to keep his fitness up and to bed into English football. And there's actually a lot of other first teamers that I'm making available now as well. French, Samuel Smith, Branthwaite, Parry, Trilly, Ledeau. Lots of players I'm allowing to play for the under 21s just to make sure that while we're in a period of only playing once a week, I need to keep the reserves match fitness up for when we hit that stretch again coming soon where we're going to be playing twice a week and they, I need them to be able to rotate in at full match fitness. So I hand over now to Anthony Clark. You can see he has a 69% win percentage, only four games lost and two of those were cup fixtures. Can he extend this winning percentage today? Yes, he can. And in what style? 5-0 against Sheffield United. Fantastic performances from nearly everyone in the team. Our right flank had a bit of a rough day, but aside from that, absolutely cracking performance. For our first goal, Garner played it through to Finch, back to Garner, a lovely one too there, and Mansbert ran onto the through ball. Failed clearance there from the Sheffield United defender, but a quality finish from Ramazzani to knock it past the goalkeeper, who Ramazzani then missed a penalty, but a great volleyed finish for our third off the rebound. And then Trilly playing a fantastic ball over the top to Finch, who managed to round three Sheffield United players to put the ball in the back of the net. And finally, Omar Bamadeli this time, lofting a ball across to Ramazzani, who played a fantastic low drilled cross for Ekatike to just put the finish on. And five nil what a performance and anthony clark's now hoping to give the players a rest day tony you're, you're such a lovely bloke you really are well just a quick check in on those under 21s a one all draw against bournemouth's under 21s but Arteza was man of the match so hopefully my plan to give him as much football as possible before the end of the season is working and we're about to get another 1.3 million pounds from Sampdoria for Jordan Pickford making his 20th appearance that will add quite nicely to our transfer kitty so it's the 25th of January transfer deadline day is in one week and this is an important week not just for Everton but for two other clubs very close to my heart Birmingham City despite flying high in the playoff positions at the start of the season have fallen away and they're now five points outside the playoffs and unfortunately despite the great work we did there over a couple of seasons no one's really showing much interest in their high value players so I don't know how much they'll be able to do in terms of transfer business this window. This season for them has been incredibly quiet and in fact Blasquez is their biggest sale and that was of course to us. No new Moneyball signings for them, just low knees. So it's sad to see the Moneyball principles falling away. Martin Rennie is their current manager. He's still playing that 5-2-1-2 that was favoured by Thomas Lech but I think Birmingham will be entirely reliant on Jude Bellingham moving to get any budget for this transfer window and in fact hang on their balance is 28 million that must that must be bellingham it is bellingham's now moved to manchester city wow he moved on the 7th of january so i suspect that means birmingham might well now be able to do some business all oh, very exciting times for birmingham but worthing our first club in this savers director of moneyball are in a whole heap of trouble they're 14 points away from safety in the vanarama national league and their transfer business since i left has been absolutely shocking look they've got a load of old men in the squad chris mcphee has recently been sacked so ashley footy is now in charge look at his attributes they should absolutely have gone with ben watson they never realized when they were onto a good thing so the other clubs that i've taken control of in this save have not been able to sustain their performance levels after i've departed but you can see right now from everton's performance exactly what a director of moneyball can achieve one further piece of business that we have lined up I just want to show you is Joachim Fischer joining us in July at the end of his contract with Bayern. Yes, he's another 19-year-old. Yes, he's a prospect. But as a free signing, this does feel essentially like I'm bringing him into our youth team. 
He's done pretty well, I would say, for Bayern's second team this season. And although he's a little lacking in strength, has obviously got room to improve that at the age of just 19. One downside, though, we haven't been able to get a work permit for him. So we will be loaning him out straight away and uh, trying to get him as much game time as possible to become a first team regular for us in the future. Consider him a future investment. Right, 28th of January, there's our 1.3 million for Pickford, who's just played his 20th league game for Sampdoria. Compare Pickford to Heddle, who's his permanent replacement here. I think we definitely got the better end of that deal. And a day later, I'm allowing Robert Parry to join Portsmouth on loan until the end of the season. He has epic potential as a Premier League central defender, but he's just not getting into the team at the moment. So I don't want him to waste away in the under 21s at 20 years old. He needs game time. So hopefully Portsmouth can provide that for him for the rest of the season. And now it's Rotherham away. Everyone wants a victory again. Clark's not taking any chances. He wants the players to be focused and ready to work hard. He's not expecting an easy match. And that is a great frame of mind for our head coach to take onto the field against Rotherham. And we absolutely batter Rotherham as well. 4-1 victory away from home. Mansvert was the first player to score again for us, the second match in a row, this time from a corner. Ramazzani didn't make any mistake with the penalty this time, despite missing the last time out. Mansvert very unfortunate to hit the bar with this free kick, but the rebound fell to Caligari for an easy finish. And then Garner played the ball through to Sonny Finch, who I thought would run himself into trouble, but came to Mabude, who drilled a finish into the bottom corner beyond Rotherham's goalkeeper. Rotherham did get a late consolation with a headed goal from a corner. But 4-1, look at this. Every single player apart from Heddle getting above a 7. What a performance. One downside is that Koberlein is now developing concerns. He's not getting enough first team football and wants to go on loan. I'm happy with that. I would like him to get more football and keep his value up. So we'll offer him out and see who takes an interest. Well, despite all this crazy transfer business, we are officially a rich football club now. I'm a little concerned about how quickly our overall balance is dropping. I will need to sell some players in the summer. I've no doubt to make sure that we don't fall into huge amounts of debt again. So a quiet transfer deadline day is expected. I'm still not planning on any business. We'll see what happens, but I don't feel like there's any gaps in this squad I need to plug right now. And here is concrete proof that we don't need to make any moves in the market. Sonny Finch has just been named player of the month. 19 goals and five assists in 25 starts. What a return for a player who some of you were concerned would not return a decent goal contribution rate. He was also named young player of the month. And guess who won manager of the month? Yeah. Anthony Clark, legend in the making. Oh, well, it's a good job we did bring in Blazquez. Hedl is now out for seven days to two weeks after injuring himself jumping. I'm assuming that's jumping to catch a ball in training and not just, you know, jumping off a railing or jumping off a pier into the sea. Who knows? So Blazquez definitely making his debut in our next match against Preston in five days' time. And we have received loan offers for Samuels Smith and Cobra line. So it's over to them now to make their decision about where they want to play their football for the rest of this season. Brilliant. Well, Cobra line, despite wanting to go out on loan to get more first team football, has rejected the offer from Boa Vista. So let's try and offer him out again. And Samuel Smith also wants to stay despite me trying to get him some game time. Right, let's offer him out on loan again as well. Right, one hour to go. Koberline is moving now on loan to Boa Vista despite him saying no last time. Who knows what's actually changed his mind. We're letting him go for free. We couldn't convince anyone to pay any of his wages disappointingly, but at least he will get regular game time and hopefully improve his current ability in the process. And I'd just like to point out we haven't spent a penny. Still got £58 million sitting there. So I think we'll hang on to that to help us get ready for the Premier League at the end of this season. And that's it. We're all done. £36 million spent by us in this transfer window. We received £1.8 million, mostly for Caprila. And Samuel Smith did just manage to sneak in a loan move to Augsburg before the window closed. So we now have comfortably the biggest spend on wages in the division. And this is how our squad's looking. Two great choices in goal. Finally, two solid options at left back. 
You already know Caligari and Trilli, who are playing very well as our right-back options. Omobamadeli, Branthwaite, Bicetic and Diamande are cracking options for us at centre-back. We've got Onana and now a backup defensive midfielder in the form of Lado. Medina, Garner, Mansverk and Hall to rotate in the middle of the park. Ramazzani and Dobbin on the left. Mabude and Fernandez to fight it out on the right. And that leaves Finch and Ekitike up front. We've got depth and backups all over the pitch. And we've got Preston up next, who are bottom of the league. What can Anthony Clark's team do this time? It's another victory. 2-0 away at Preston. Blazquez keeps a clean sheet on his debut. Two late goals from Ekitike and Garner seal the three points for us and we follow that up a couple of days later with a 1-0 victory over Reading. Great performances all over the pitch again. This team is on absolute fire. So it's the 12th of February. We're just about to kick off against Luton Town and we're now 15 points clear at the top of the league. What an incredible team I've constructed here at Everton. Surely it's only a matter of time until we seal this title. Could we get 100 points? To be honest, at this stage, it would be a bit of a surprise if we didn't. So we shall return when we're on the verge of the title. And when it's time for us to start thinking about life in the Premier League. Yes, that's right. The director of Moneyball next season looks like he's going to be in charge of a Premier League football club. Join me again soon. I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched today. If you have, please drop a like on the video, turn your notifications on and subscribe to the channel to find out the second the next video drops. And of course, in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. <laughs>